Thank you for tuning in today. My name is Jacob Spellis with Vital Health, a licensed social worker. And today I want to talk to you about how to find the right therapist. First, I want to acknowledge you. If you're watching this video, you're probably thinking, how do I find a therapist? Who can help me? No one can help me. There's too many therapists there. And one of the things I think is important is finding somebody that can help your needs. So therapists, a lot of times, specialize in certain disorders or certain type of populations and so forth. First thing is imagining what type of social worker that, that could help you. You know, for example, if you're a vet, Typically, sometimes they want to see a veteran social worker, somebody that's a little bit older, somebody that maybe can relate to combat, you know, they, they know the language, they know the same experiences. One, finding what you're trying to accomplish, and two, who do you think can get you there? And I want to acknowledge you that you might be trying to get help, and that's a very brave thing. You know, the first step is admitting that you might need help. It's hard, you know, you're trusting somebody with your life, you might have to get new people, uh, you have to tell people everything, you know, so going on first doing a little research you know sometimes reviews can kind of be a little off a little bit you know sometimes at places you know a patient might not be able to get the right medication that he's trying to get maybe the doctor doesn't prescribe or has effects you know say so leave a bad review or unfortunately you know sometimes people might not be at their best stable mood and they might leave a bad review you know I see it all the time with treatment centers and so forth as well kind of leaving bad reviews that might change your vision a little bit of who to get but it also helps looking on websites like psychology today google reviews the actual company's website and you can look at some of the disorders that they specialize some people like me as an individual i don't do the best with general anxiety disorders or sometimes younger people with anxiety disorders you know it's just not my niche in counseling you know i typically work with rougher cases criminal justice system everybody has their own thing just like other medical practices or nurses or doctors they specialize in how to help you so looking at what your needs are maybe a bipolar sort of substance abuse that's another breed maybe it's uh, geriatric somebody can help you and assist what you're looking for you know he's either you can call the place and say hey I have these issues can somebody help me people specialize in kids and adults normally they work on different things it's a different breed of therapy a vital health we serve kids and adults and I know you know sometimes the adults can't see the kids and the kids staff can't see the adults it's just something that maybe they went to school for maybe other CEUs and trainings and conferences are tailored in research based uh, therapeutic interventions that that's what they specialize in next step you know realizing that you're not married to the individual you know you could see somebody and maybe not like them you know me as a therapist sure it might initially hurt your feelings that Somebody says you might not be the best fit, but a good therapist is always able to say, hey, I realize I'm not the best for you. It's part of actually our code of ethics too. If we don't have specific experiences with this population, we're always supposed to tell the clinical director what to do and what not to do, you know? so something very important to think about. You know, finding somebody that you vibe with is important, right? It's good to have a good therapeutic alliance, building rapport with individuals and having that, you know, in this step, realizing a the therapist is not your friend. And what I mean is that, uh, let's say you're married, right? And you have a big fight and the, the wife goes to their family and the husband goes to his family. Well, of course, their family might be a little biased and have each other's back, but it might not be the best thing for the marriage because they didn't provide anything that really helps them, you know? So I think it's somebody that can hold you accountable, somebody that can call out your BS, somebody that can push you and give you an outside perspective to really help. Third thing, looking for therapists, I think it's really important, it's like understanding your trauma. There's been individuals I go to go work with, they might be in a domestic violence relationship and by chance I might look like, unfortunately, the, the spouse that they had that, that created this abuse. So obviously it's already triggering them and they don't even know you, you know, you're not a bad therapist or anything like that but that trigger is a barrier of them entering treatment you know it's so important I see it uh, a lot of people calling hey I need a female only therapist you know they might have relationships with a father growing up or vice versa I need a male only therapist you know I can't talk to women I can't do this so, you know so doing your own self-assessment of 
who is the individual that can really help you is important, you know? Giving the therapist a fair shot, seeing them for a couple, unless they're terrible or something, you know, but seeing them for two, three, four appointments before you kind of make a decision to get, get, get the work, you know? On my end as a therapist, it takes a lot of work diagnosis. It's not like a quick process, you know, and that's appointment one. Then the next appointment might be a treatment plan. You're putting goals together, building report, knowing who they are, where they want to take their life. You know, so that's already two. Three is just like maybe the first one, going over processes, venting, learning techniques, applying, and then so forth. So you can see how it takes just a little time, you know? Just like back in the day, they used to have these TV commercials that would say like 30 days, money back, guaranteed. People never use the product, but they demand the company to have, you know, a refund on the stuff. Same thing with the therapist, you know, if you're, you know, like when I train staff, for example, I always say, you know, good mode of measure. If they give 10%, you kind of give 10%. And I'm not saying like, don't advocate for your patient or nothing like that, but you got to build the same amount of work ethic to you get them to that 100% where they self-sustain on their own. That's very critical, you know, and don't give up on yourself finding individuals. You know, there's a hundred, I mean, probably thousands in your state, social workers, therapists, psychologists, you know, they can really help you in this in this instance. Maybe even if you're seeing a psychiatrist and they give you medication, they might have recommendations of people that can work for you. Next step, uh, I would say when finding a therapist, you know, is finding a, a comfortable location, making sure they're paneled with your insurance company unless you're paying cash. You know, that could be another barrier that you don't want to get in with somebody and then you realize your insurance isn't paying and they, they might have to stop the relationship. Very important. So these are some of my steps find a therapist if you want to leave a message or comment or anything else that you're asking for my name is Jacob Spouse of Vital Health thank you so much